days ago, I was wondering what on earth I could do with all of my paper scraps. I was overwhelmed and worried that they would all end up in the recycling. That's when I decided to have a paper scraps stash busting challenge. Here are the rules. Rule number one, a paper scrap is not a scrap unless it is less than six inches wide. Rule number two, the challenge is complete when I have used 50 different paper scraps and I need to do it in just five days. Rule number three, any paper scrap that is left on day five has to go into the recycling, no matter how pretty it is. Five days. I'm nearing the end of the challenge and I do not want to let any of these paper scraps go, but I am running out of time. I need a way that I can add lots onto one project. I'm going to fit them together a little bit like a puzzle. This one is a twist on the idea I shared on day one. If you've missed that video, be sure to check the description box below. I'll make a card as well because I do have quite a few smaller pieces left. I think you're gonna like this idea. There is loads to share, so we best get started. Here's a look at all of the paper scraps I'll be working with today. Today's focus certainly is on getting as many scraps onto my layout as possible. I have gone ahead off camera and mounted my photo and the layout frame. And I've used this beautiful emerald green that was the perfect match for the dress that she's wearing in the picture. I can now work on a plan to get these scraps used up. I hope you're ready for a little bit of controversy. So I am actually going to use blue on this layout. I am going to pair the emerald green with blue. Did your mother ever tell you that blue and green should never be seen except with another color in between? That's how it went, right? I think that's how it went. Well, that is definitely the plan for today because I still have quite a few blue scraps left over and it is day four. Today's the day that I have to get a lot of scraps on this page and that's gonna mean mixing and matching colors and prints that I maybe wouldn't normally. Essentially what I'm trying to do is create two rows of the paper strips. These are a little bit different to the clusters I created in day one, specifically because the top edge is going to stay nice and straight. I very loosely want them to feel more like hanging banners than a cluster of paper scraps. You might notice that I'm fussing a little bit more with this top banner. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. The first one being that I need to be mindful of the printed paper that's going to go side by side with my photo. We all know that mums give the best advice, so I am going to follow what she says and avoid putting any blue up against my photo there. The other thing that I'm really paying attention to is the balance of of colors and prints in the banners themselves. I want to be sure that the pops of various colors are spread quite evenly across the page. I thought it might be fun to add an extra detail to these. So I have run the base page through my sewing machine and added just a row of stitching along the tops of each of the banners. It was at this point that I decided my photo needed a second photo mat. I feel like it really helps it pop off the page and it helps with that blue flag there on the left. I wasn't too worried about it at this point because I knew that there were embellishments that I was going to place around my photo. What I didn't realize was just how perfect that one on the left would be. It's actually the perfect shape because it's quite rectangular and it does go with the flow of the photo and with the direction of the banners. For me, this is the most fun part of creating. I love to find the perfect place for each embellishment. At this point, I'm thinking a lot about the flow of the page. 
I do want it to read left to right and it is a very horizontal design. So I want to be sure to add my title within that same space. I don't want it to sit too low because I know that the eye is going to naturally travel left to right across the page. This gold puffy sticker title was perfect. And in fact, this collection has a bunch of them. And I have to say, they are in the most perfect shade of gold. I'll be sure to link them below along with all of the supplies I'm using today. So this is the point where everything that I have said previously about blue and green goes out the window. I could not believe I found that floral embellishment. It's a blue flower with green leaves. It is literally made for this page. Could not believe it. Of course, I have to put it on the right there. And what it does is opens my mind to new possibilities like this chipboard piece right here. I'm really loving the balance of the blue on the page now. And I love that I've got an element that's raised up. That piece is chipboard. So I've got a little bit more texture happening now. I wasn't crazy keen on the sentiment, not a problem. I'm just going to cover it up with that beautiful swan. You might have noticed that I do prefer to work from biggest embellishments through to smallest. Think of it a little bit like a wedding cake. The bottom tier is the biggest and that is the base of the layout. The middle tier are medium sized embellishments and then the top tier and the decorations are those extra details that really pull a page together. And if you ever feel that your page is missing a little something, add a bow. They always work, which is why I'm all about them bows. If you are looking for help with building out embellishment clusters, I actually created a video series on that. I'll be sure to link it below. It's filled with ideas and tips and tricks that will work for scrapbook layouts as well as for cards. I'm finalizing the last few details and that's the layout complete. Here you can see all the details of the embellishment clusters and those really beautiful paper layers. I managed to get so many paper scraps onto this layout and I love how it turned out. Let me show you how this idea will work for a card. Here's a look at the paper banner that I created for my card base. I've used exactly the same technique as I used on the scrapbook layout, just in a smaller scale. What I did do though was add a ribbon along the top edge there, as well as my stitching. I've cut a card front to match the card base and then all I'm going to do is center this piece on the card. From here you have lots of options. I'm going to keep things pretty simple and just add a sentiment using the thicker alphabets. You could keep things super simple and just leave it as is. I am going to add one more detail. This is a fussy cut out butterfly from a pattern paper. I'll attach the card front to the card base now and that's the card complete. I love the layers of paper on this card and I think it's a really clever way to use up your scraps. At the end of day four, I only have tiny paper scraps to go, but there is a lot of them. Too many. Can I actually save these from the recycling? There's only one day left to find out. I will see you all again tomorrow. Until then, bye!